David, I ask you if you're ready because oftentimes yeah. you're not ready and you say I'm you're always ready, ready and you're not ready. I'm always ready. Stu, I'm always ready. What I would love for you to do is stop asking dumb questions. Even if I'm not ready, I'm ready. And if we have to re-record because I don't have my mic plugged in by chance. Yeah, you weren't I'm still ready. ready. I'm still ready. Lock it up. That's not what we're going to hear to talk about. What we're here to talk about is money. Money, money, money. You know, we've had a lot of... Uh, money. Oh, sorry. We, I thought we, had... we were still singing. <laughs> we, we've had a lot of good feedback from uh, Monday's episode uh, about money. Um, and, you know, we uh, it is one of the topics that we talk about in uh, the Kinetic Man Mastermind. It's one of the, the core months, finances. And uh, we're in that topic right now with one of our tribes. And man, there's some good conversation around money. Yeah, man. And, and here's the funny thing about finances. When you start digging, it's very rarely about finances, right? Like I, I want to acknowledge that there are uh, there are a variety of people in the world and and there are of various uh, states of financial well-being or and however you define that. And But that's the point. How do you define that, right? And, and I'll tell you, this was interesting. I had uh, two buddies of mine that I had conversations with recently who traveled to Kenya and, and they're both, um, you know, they're both doing very, very well in business. And, uh, for all intents and purposes are, are, uh, you know, the top, the top, top percent. Right. And, and it was a, one of the things that, that they both talked about was, man, it's just a really interesting, they're both were struggling through this. And what they're struggling through is they, they both said in a different way, but said the same thing, you know, the folks that they went out to help um, and what I love about the way they're helping, they're helping them grow businesses in, in, you know, in, in Kenya, they're helping them to, they're not giving them anything. They're, they're giving them, if anything, we're giving them information and they're really there to support, uh, you know, support them to, to build their own businesses and to get out of whatever financial situation that they, the desire to get out of, if, if that's the, if that's the path they want to take. Um, but both of these gentlemen, we're talking about, they were struggling because they're like, man, we go out there. These are not ignorant people that they're helping. Um, this, they're not people who are unaware of their situation, right? Like they, they know exactly what their situation is. And he said, yet they are extremely, there are two things he pointed out. He said, they're extremely resourceful. Uh, one of them was like, dude, I don't even feel like a man when I go out there because these guys like do, they can do everything. Like everything he's like, if they got to fix the, you know, the car, they fix the car. If they got to build a house, they build a house, um, very resourceful, smart. And he's like, I, I just, you know, I, I outsource everything. And so he's like, and this is his, his, him saying this, I'm not suggesting that to be a man, you have to be able to fix a car, but he was, he was like, dude, I just don't feel like, I, I just don't feel like as much of a man around them. He said, but the other part and the more important part is that they are happy truly happy, truly experienced joy. And one of the men in our mastermind lives in Costa Rica. And, and the other day, you know, he said, this is what I'm surrounded by financially. He picked his camera up and he showed us and, you know, the, the, the houses and the, the shacks that, that were surrounding the field that he was in. And he was like, and I live in a blue zone. People here are happy. There's joy. He said, the thing that's ruining, he mentioned this today, the thing that's, that's cutting into that joy is the inflection of, of all the injection, I'm sorry, all the injection of American stuff like Walmarts and McDonald's because now obesity's come to the island uh, and and people have to, instead of there being local things or driving to have to access these things. So he's basically, he's not he's not bashing America. He's just saying it's not necessarily the the best way. And that was what my, my other buddy said. He's like, dude, we have all this affluence, uh, you know, generally speaking, richest country in the world. We have all these, these, these things and this stuff and this material, materialism and capitalism. Again, I'm not, not making any judgment on that. I love all those things. He's like, but we also have way higher anxiety. We have so much less joy. We have so many of these different issues that they just aren't having those conversations over there. And they're not experiencing the, the, the fallout of that, of that abundance of stuff. And, and his point was, it's just a very curious conversation that we should be having. Yeah, man. Um, you know, it's interesting that, uh, you know, what Lyle showed us and talked about and, and, you know, what your buddy who went to Kenya talked about and showed and, and the commonality of all these blue zones is, is community. Like they, one have to rely on each other 
to to you know be resourceful they have to do things together they have dinners together they they hang out together their families live together their communities live together um it's togetherness right and and uh where we are in in american society like for the most part everyone's seeking to be independent right um you know and and i think as uh we get wealthier and wealthier and make more money it it almost like forces you to be more independent and like you, you know you start outsourcing everything just just to you know your buddy's point like out, i outsource everything like i just i just pay somebody to go do the thing right fix the car uh, i don't bring a tribe around me to we'll fix the car together like in community right and so there, there's something there like money money can't buy happiness like you know, you gotta need money to put the, you know, roof over your head and pay for electricity. But this idea of of money and the feeling around it, the relationship around it that we talked about it last time, the the money isn't the issue. It's it's the it's the feeling towards that and uh, the well, relationship it's not, it's not being that. intentional, right? It's not being intentional. Right. It's, 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 you know, I think when you said roof over your head, I started thinking about multiple stories, multiple one comes to mind of a good buddy of mine. Who's also in the mastermind. And he talks about his family. He, he did a, he bought a RV when he went out to, he was in the Navy. Um, years ago, he did a master's program out in Monterey and he bought an RV and they lived in that as a family, they lived in the RV and they spent whatever the year, however long they spent in that. And he was like, dude, that was like the happiest. Like that was such a pure joy. We're all in each other's stuff, but, but we just, it was an adventure and we loved it. We loved it. And he's like, I want to do that again. Right. I want to do that again. And so you talk about a roof over your house. Yeah. Or a roof over your head. Super, super important, significant, you know, shelter is important, but does it have to be a 3000 square foot house roof over your head that comes with a 300, you know, a three, a 3000 square foot mortgage. And, and does it have to be like, does it have to, we've never, we never think through what we need oftentimes, especially in this country, dude, you know, you know, well, the Joneses, man, they've got, but do you see the new car they've got? And like this and that, you know, I'm teaching my kids these things to assess these things, to add value to these things, to really be like, okay, well, what's the debt position of that? Like, do you know what the stress involved with that? Like what all goes into the, all these decisions? And so there's a lot of things, and, and this was really powerful in our in our conversation today. It goes back to the the point that finances are very often they're not the thing that caused the the rift in the marriage. They're not the thing that caused the pain in the household. They're not the thing. And and oftentimes, you know, we also talked about the idea that uh, a lot of us were were like, man, you know, me or my my spouse. There's a certain number that we have to have in the bank account to have comfort. Well, dude, it, it just from a purely objective, purely objective standpoint. Without just just pure math, you're drawing comfort in a number that is literally being devalued on a daily basis just based on inflation. Like you just know that that's like that's that's economics 101, right? And so you have to dig into that. You have to question, okay, why? I'm not suggesting you don't save. That is not what I'm saying. And I'm not suggesting you take all your money and you invest it. I'm not saying that either. I'm not saying anything. I'm not telling you to do anything. What I'm telling you to do is assess those emotions really like when you start fighting with your wife or your husband about finances, well, what are you really fighting about? Like ask that question, take a break and ask, what am I really fighting about? Is it money or is it control? Is it money or is it being secretive? Is it money or is it lies? Like, what are you really lying? Or I'm sorry, what are you really fighting about? And and when you put your faith in a number, well, what do you really have faith in? Like, you have to question it. Like, why do I draw comfort in this devaluing number that's literally losing money, I feel less risk on a risky bet. <laughs> like I'm losing money in this account. Why does that give me joy or comfort? Ask the question, right? Like that's what this group is all about. That's what the conversations that we're all about. Those are the conversations that we, that we highly recommend you have are to question more deeply the decisions you're making around the, the things you have and the things you do to actually have some context, to actually have some purpose behind them. Because then when you get to the truth, you can actually start getting to actionable items.
you can do something about your situation. And, and, and again, that is the, the, that is the foundation of being different and being better. It, it's not to change it. I don't have the, I don't have the formula to make you better. Better is that, that's, that's for you to decide. Redefine success for yourself. But if you've never defined, then how can you be better? If you, if you don't even know why you do, if you don't know why you have comfort in a number that is perpetually decreasing in value, like that's a fair question. That's a fair question. And if you don't know, an, if you don't have an answer, you've never thought about it. Well, that's what else in your life is going unanalyzed? What else are you investing in? Where else are you putting effort that is actually devaluing, that is actually taking away from your life? And what can you do about it? Yeah, you know, speaking of kind of just the idea of redefining success, um, you know, a lot of people have five-year goals, 10-year goals, uh, primarily around money, primarily around finances. And, um, you know, if it doesn't go as planned or if things deviate from uh, what you currently have in store, if, if, you know, if a spouse loses a job or you're transitioning from, you know, a military, uh, you know, pay that you've been getting paid for 20 years and your, your pay gets cut in half, uh, you know, any change like that, like, I think it really is, uh, like you said, uh, important to evaluate what one, what you, what you really need, right? Because if, if you have enough money in the bank or, or a paycheck that, that covers your expenses, that covers the roof over your head, you know, the, the water, the electricity, uh, putting food on the table, like we're better off than most people in the world. And, and to be brutally honest, like the world is your oyster after that. Right. And maybe it's okay that you don't go immediately into another high paying job and maybe redefining success is I do have a little bit more margin in my life to be at home and be present with my kids. Maybe it is okay for it to be a one income family instead of a two income family because the other can then pour into, you know, the time at home and um to to be, you know, present for the kids and and to, you know, to open up capacity and margin to be healthy or uh, you know, whatever that is for you to to really redefine success success isn't just about money. It's about, it's about relationships. It's about, you know, family. It's about being healthy. It's about uh, giving. It's about your faith. It's about so many other things that we talk about in the Comedic Man Mastermind. Um, and maybe not making as much money might be a better definition of success because it opens up avenues and apertures for other things in your life. Yeah. And I mean, at least at a minimum, it, you're just, you're just, thinking about right and that's that's what i love about this community that we have i feel like i'm a pretty intentional dude with this stuff right I, you and i you and i i mean it's not like uh you know 15 minutes or an hour 15 a week that we spend on talking about these things like you and i are very much in conversation you know steven you throw him in a loop like it changes the whole dynamic of those conversations and challenges well in, the, in our community in the kinetic man even today dude like that level of intentionality that we have and then we go into this group and a couple of dudes say some things and I'm like, dude, I really, I need to reassess the way I'm thinking about this. Like I personally need to, I'm, I left the call today, you know, this is 10 minutes ago. Um, I left it like, man, I, I really need to, I, I have more work to do because the, the number that I set that I'm potentially capping my income at, like, what is that really, is that what all goes into that? Like what is really being driven at? How much of that is, is also influence like that I want to be at a certain economic uh, or a certain pay level? Like what, how much is that, you know, I still haven't fully defined what I need. Right. And, and, and that's a great conversation too. Like, what do I need? What do I want? That in and of itself is a great exercise to just assess what do I truly need? What do I want? Cause it's in there and it influences the way that you act and the things that you do. So you might as well name it, right? And then you at least can balance. So you can you can name it. Wow, dude, I really want a Lambo, but but I really want to hang out with my kids. Like, what's more important? I personally do not want a Lambo. That strikes me as an absolutely horrendous uh, per, for my knees and my hips to get in. That thing would be absolutely terrible. But but that aside, you know, what is what are the things? It just really the community, the power of the community. It's forcing me to to 
to relook at it and redefine and be like, man, do I really want that? Do I, do I really want that? It, because that number also has impact on a number of lives. Not only is it my wife and my kids uh, and the, the impact of my time, but it impacts you and Steven, right? It, it, there's a, there's a true impact. If I'm like, Hey guys, I'm ready to roll. Like I, I want to go 18, you know, I want to go uh, uh, 10 hours a day. I want to go 70 hours a week. Let's do this. Let's do it. And you guys are like, ah, no. Or if I'm like, yeah, you know what? My number's like, like 2k a month. I'm, I'm totally good. Like I actually want to really cut my hours back significantly. Maybe I don't even want to see you guys. Um, th that has an impact too. But if you never, you never just go through the mental gymnastics of doing that and then run that by a tribe and, and be challenged in your thought process. Most people, here's what they're afraid of in a tribe like this. They're afraid of success. I'm just going to call it straight up. You're afraid to be better. I'm reading a book right now, The Big Leap. And it, it's it's science, right? Well, it's science. Let me let's say, you are afraid to live your best life. It's true. And so the idea of living in this in this uh, place of being an awesome dad, an awesome husband, and making the money that you want to make, and, and having a life that that is very fulfilling, most of us are afraid of that, and we sabotage that because of the way we're programmed. And so that's the power of this group is to get around some guys that challenge that. And not avoid those questions anymore and be like, okay, oh, that's really good. That's really, I can't tell you the number of conversations that I have had and need to have with my wife because somebody else did it before I did. And they told me about it, right? Or finances, the things to consider or fun or friends or any of these things, family, you know, all these things that we talk about, man, like, do you truly want to be better? Do you truly want to be better? And what is that worth to you? And I think that's really the, the the basis of this question, the, the the basis of this finances conversation. It's rarely about the finances. It's about you and your faith and your family and where your time goes and your energy and your capacity and your joy and your passion, your love, all these things. It's not finances, like put it where it's put it. It's like saying hammers, man, hammers really make me happy, dude. I love hammers. It's the best ever. Not even. I mean, hammers are pretty rad. Hammers are dope. I love, I, I actually do love hammers. I got like, I probably have four or five hammers at home. I got the big ones, got the small ones, got the floor laying ones. I love hammers. Hammers are awesome. They're great. But at the end of the day, are you going to get a divorce over a hammer? Maybe. Most I mean, likely. If, if my wife breaks wife's a contract or favorite hammer, like, yeah, you're out, you're, you're out. out. Right. If she breaks a hammer though, I'm going to be like, okay, how'd she do that? That's pretty impressive. <laughs> But, but, but most likely it's a tool. You're not going to get a divorce over that. So when you say, ah, oh, we we just can't get this financial thing in our marriage, that ah, baloney, dude, it's something else. Quit hiding behind it and let's get to the root. And finance is a great place to do that. Let's get to the root. Why does my bank account so important? Oh, cause I have no faith in God. Ooh, Ooh, Ooh. Oh, that one stings. Okay. There, there it is. <laughs> All right. There it is. Why do I not give? Why am I not generous? Well, because I, well, I'm greedy. Oh, Interesting. What are you gonna do about it? So that's what we talk about. These are the things we talk about. If this excites you, which it should, I, I hope it does. And we're looking for the dudes that this does excite, right? We're looking for the men that these kind of conversations going deep, that are excited by this, that are excited by the challenge. The guys in our group that have lost collectively, you know, well over 200 pounds at this point. Like, I mean, the guys that want to be better physically, the guys that want to be better mentally, who want to be challenged, who who want other men in their life. When they say bull crap, like, oh, I'm getting divorced because of finances. Nah, dude, let's dig into that. Oh, you're a control freak and you cheated on your wife and you're saying that's finances? No, like, let's let's dig in, right? Let's get real. Let's be vulnerable. Let's be better. Let's be different. Let's be amazing. Let's do this, dude. Come on. Take uncommon action. Uncommon action. Redefine success. Get it. See ya. See ya.